another CQ cucumber. Another CQ cucumber. <laughs> this, this looks like good sea cucumber having that. Right. So a lot of sediment. Be. Uh, and since we already collected two samples, I would just like to kind of touch on the cultural significance of where we are. Um, I know we talk about it a lot, but I think it's important to bring oh, up every do. time we take samples. Yeah, and you're very quiet, Jaina, by the way. Um, can everyone hear me? Yes, yes. that's better. Yeah, yep. okay. yeah we can hear you. That's funny, I didn't touch anything, Mia. <laughs> Maybe you just spoke a little louder. Um, but yeah, we're in Pabahana Mokuakea. Um, this is a very important place to Native Hawaiians. Um, being a native Hawaiian myself, I feel very honored and blessed to be here. Um, yeah, when we're taking samples, I think it's extra important just to remember where we are and to remember that to native Hawaiians, um, we're in the land of Po. This is where we believe origin begins and life ends. Um, and this is where our Amakua rests, where our ancestors rest. Um, and we believe that everything, living and even rocks, um, have spirits within them and our spiritual beings. And so when we're collecting things, we're literally collecting people's ancestors, we're collecting spirits. And I think it's important to remember that um, we're taking these things away from these their home where they'll probably never be returned. And these samples can be taken to multiple parts of the world and broken up, you know, and right taken to many different places. So it's just important that we remember that as we collect. And even though some people might just say like, oh, it's just rock. Um, I think it's about respect and, yeah, just knowing where we are and having respect for where we are and for others and what others believe in. So, yeah. Yeah, push in on the Thank you. corner up there for us, please. That was beautiful. And I apologize. I forgot I turned SPL down so I could uh, talk to the bridge. <laughs> thank you so much for sharing that, Jaina. Yeah, thank you. Of course. Thank you, Jaina, and it's welcome, a uh, welcome reminder any and all times as we are here and we continue to be here and it, we need to be reminded of that. So thank you. So uh, this very interesting thing that we are looking right now on the screen to me looks like a hemicorded an econ worm but I would I need Yeah it is. Yeah right? yeah. It's a it's a worm? It's a hemicorded. It's not a worm, a worm. It's just called an acorn worm. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's the en enteronusta, the hemicorda, mm -hmm. So it is actually a chordata. It's not an invertebrate. It's a okay. It's a chordate. And uh, yeah, this is quite a rare sighting. We don't see these very often. So I think we also had also passed one previously, but this is a Yes, this is a beautiful observation of an acorn worm, which are very rarely observed. And we can see the sediment that it has been feeding on. So That's it great. goes in through the purple yeah. end, and then it processes yeah. out and excretes it out the other yes. end, as we yes. can see the trail. Yes. Uh, yeah, we can see the sediment trail that it has been leaving. So it is a deposit feeder. So it means it feeds on uh, sediment and depositions on the sea floor. That's, that's a great zoom and a great observation. Thank you so much. Yeah, we can continue moving. Okay. Very interesting. Thank you. Uh, uh, watch. And Jaina, feel free to chime in if you want, like literally every sample collection, since we have people tuning in at different times and our samples are usually spread out really far apart. I think that is a really good reminder, but don't feel obligated to, but if you feel the need to or the, the likelihood to, um, I, I highly encourage it. Yes, thank you, Taylor Ann. Trying to get better at speaking up. Yeah. So thanks for, uh, you all also for making it feel like such a safe space where I can speak up. I love when you chime in, so keep doing it. Yes. I will. Yeah, this is the middle watch. We've got your back, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate everything you do and 
everything you're sh you have to share, so, yeah. That's a real Hawaiian right there. <laughs> oh, you're all the best. There is a su suspicious lack of sea stars. We could turn left at any time. <laughs> Up hill to the left. Don't now. start it, LC. <laughs> I think this will be the deposit feeder dive. <laughs> yeah, I think it's yeah. like the sediment that's... Quite a few other benthic animals. What's that? Is that a waypoint up there you're trying to hit? No. Yeah, Arch. I hope so. Uh, that's more of a valley there, though, right? I want to go up the ridge. Or am I looking at that backwards? Is that a ridge or a valley? be on the ridge so if that's the ridge to the south there now the other yeah if that's the ridge yeah yeah if you look at Atlanta sonar it's it's getting steep on the left side and then way off 100 meters it's uh, we're getting some returns on the other side so it looks like we're in the valley to me for me. Let me come around. Uh, you can change it. Yeah, you can change the setting. Little fish there on the sand. And um, Elsa, you've been able to help with some of the sample processing actually a lot recently, right? Do, yeah. Would you like to share a little bit about um, what any like highlights of what you've learned or um, how that whole process works? Yeah, thanks, Kara. It's actually been a really great experience on board. And um, I found our science team on our expedition to be really great, really helpful. Um, a lot of teamwork, which is, I think, really important. And also a lot of learning, like, look, I came in... Look to your left just a bit more, 290. I came in knowing how to do some of the processes that we do on board and not some of the others. So um, we collect water samples, which we use, we filter to... Um, capture the DNA, and that's for capturing eDNA, e which stands for environmental DNA. So basically, you filter the water to capture the DNA, and they can um, analyze that in a lab. And that's a good way to see what organisms are, are present in an area without having to take samples. So Come up a bit, um, please. I had a bit of experience doing that kind of processing, so I've been helping with that. And then um, another thing that I got a chance to do, which was new for me, is to do um, biological sample processing. So normally, or I just haven't had much experience with um, handling physical samples, so last night um, I was lucky that um, the science team it's let me have a chance to do that. So. 
It basically involves, um, first of all, getting the physical samples from their receptacles on Hercules, bringing them into the lab and make she, making sure that they're stored properly according to Nautilus um, procedures, which is normally in some sort of like um, preservation fluid. And then when we, we lay it out on the table against a dark background and basically um, just look at the organism and give descriptions of it, um, like size, color, how many pieces it is. It has polka dots. Is this the, gest the jester's hat? Oh. oh, sorry, I was muted. Yes, this Je looks like the Corallium Orphalia. The jester's hat and everything. That's great. Yeah, you can see the white uh, dots at the end of the tentacles. Nice. Anatomy, right? Yes. Yeah, nice, cool. It's so you. Sorry, cute. continue, I'll say. I oh, no, no. You. No, it's, yep. <laughs> it's um, really cute. Okay. Yeah. Love to be interrupted for any cool, <laughs> cool observations. <laughs> um, yeah, so after describing the individual, then we uh, measure it and photograph it along with the name of the sample. So naming is very important. There's, um, uh, you label it with, first of all, you take a picture of the name next to the individual, out, not stored and then when you store it you have an inside label and an outside label so just um, redundancy for everything just in case um, anything gets mixed up and that's um, just a really good procedure in any lab because at any time there's going to be a lot of different stuff happening around the 290. Um, so just learning that and all the good practices and um, I was lucky enough, or um, unlucky enough, I don't know, it was cool to me, to um, process a double sample, which was a geological and a biological sample. So it was a rock that had a coral on it. And what was the name of the coral again? Uh, Upashana? Uh, it was uh, like the... Stolonifer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it was um, like the chain, it like forms a chain across on, on top of the rock of polyps. So I was using a teeny, teeny, tiny set of tweezers to pull it, the polyps individually off. Um, so it's like delicate work, but I found it enjoyable and also a really valuable learning experience. And now that sample, um, which as Jana reminded us, is um, a gift to us. So um, thankfully we're able to use that gift and we recognize that it is of great importance and we're lucky that um, we've been allowed to use these samples to learn in the name of science. So yeah, yeah pretty th awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for um, sharing that and sharing a little bit of your learning journey here on Nautilus. Um, do you think it'll be helpful for uh, your work back at um, the Palau oh. International Coral Reef Research Center? Definitely. Um, I've been really blessed to work with um, great professionals who um, have everything running in really good shape, and I think I can take some uh, best practices back to our labs in Palau as well. Looks like something's happening in the front row. <laughs> something's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Some training. Free diver takes command. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that description, Elsie. I was a tourist in the in the lab oh, last yeah, night. Yeah, everyone so I just got was to in there. <laughs> I was not in there. I went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Mia, you're welcome anytime. I really want to see stuff, but it just hasn't okay. been working with my schedule. Fly forward. It's like a Jake, run over. All right, Jake, you've got this. Forward, forward, forward. Drive it like you stole it. <laughs> Jacob taking the Hercules. 
wheel, not really wheel, but so controls. So <laughs> at the moment, uh, auto depth and auto heading are on. So I just push forward on the joystick and get out there in front of Atalanta. Um, if you want to change your depth or your heading, you see the green buttons there in front of you that say auto depth and auto heading or the ones on the screen in front of you. I can, if it's too much, I can turn them on or off, but you don't want to, uh, in particular, change your altitude while your autos are on. Otherwise, you'll, you'll automatically rotch. And then when you engage it, you don't want to be coming up or down because uh, then it will it will uh, do the same thing the boat does. It will try and grab that set point. Weird things will happen. Usually the thrusters will reverse and it'll, uh, it'll lose visibility. Um, Dan, do you mind it's putting pretty, uh, the mic just a little bit closer? At least for me, it's a little quiet. Oh, sorry. <coughs> it's, um, it's fairly benign here, so if you... Uh, so... Yeah, I just keep it in the Atlanta box there. You can get a little towards the top of the box there, because... Nope, nope, this uh, lateral. And don't twist, go. No twisting. Just forward, go forward, and then uh, push the stick to the right a little. You can see uh, here on the little blue box what your thrusters are doing, so... As you're pushing forward, you see the little orange lines coming down, and then you see the slider left and right there. So you want to have, you know, probably 50% forward right now and 50% lateral, so that should bring you back in the box. Everything happens kind of, you know, slowly, just like grabbing a boat. So at this time, it should be actually very similar to driving a boat, except you can go sideways. But you shouldn't have to worry about your uh, depth or your heading or not. And then uh, the nav screen there to your right, I try and stay about two boxes out in front. Or you can watch your tether here and see, but oh. If you get out front a little bit more, I'll tilt that around this camera up a bit more. That's probably a good there, so you can slow down there. So I'm pretty close to the center of the box if you... I won't move the camera or change Atalanta's heading, so if you kind of stay in the middle of that box, or two boxes out in front over there, should be good. We're getting close to the end of this move. Do you want me to wait to call in one? So no, you can call another one. keep everything moving. All right. It'll make it easier for Jacob. All you right. don't have to deal with that. Yeah, if you keep if you keep going forward slowly, it'll no, it's a uh, it's a fish automatically adjust the tonics, the frog fishes or something. Tonics, let's have a look. Yeah, but you would uh, the China clubs. Uh, don't change your heading just lateral. It's a Chonacops? Yeah. It looks like that. If you um, put, Chonics, if you uh, put the, the fish halfway uh, between the, where the lasers are now in the bottom of the screen. And try and hold that for a minute. By the way, I'm a horrible Argus pilot, so when Argus is in the mud, you're gonna have, people are going to have to let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Mia, you called it the danger zone, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a danger zone. I look down. So, 
If you come forward a little and then ask Jane. Yes, yeah, so the family I would say is Chonacidae and this the genus like Chonax. Chonacops is in the same family, but this doesn't look like the Chonacops. Let's, let's see. <gasps> oh. The same family, but. No, just let it drift back oh. a little bit. Yeah. It's so Don't cute. Don't pull too hard, just mostly let it drift. Let's see, let's see. Look what you find when you take over, Jake. <laughs> Or it can be a tonico. They can look very similar. I would just ID it to the family level. Oh, so okay. Sorry. Ah, uh, Chana Sidi. Chana Sidi. I'll, I'll open one for them. Are we good? Is that like a frogfish? Yeah, it's one of those. Okay. So we have some uh, little catching up to do now to get back in your box. Thank you. I haven't Thank moved you. the camera or anything. I'm just... Uh, Great job, Jake. Thanks, Jake. That was actually outstanding. Uh, a lot of people that sit down there for the first time can't... Uh, they struggle to hold the image in the camera at any zoom. When I first sat down there, I couldn't... Even full wide, I couldn't keep anything in the camera. I also find it a little easier if you uh, keep the vehicle moving a little while you're trying to do a floating zoom. There's some of our operators are just absolute magic at it. They never land. Awesome job, Jake! So, the current's uh, pushing you to the south a little bit there, so you want to Give some lateral as you're coming forward there. I'll tilt down a little and Are we going to parallel yeah. park? Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. Reminded me my first time driving in a parking lot. <laughs> you can kind of, uh, if you watch the thrust your commands there on the little blue box and watch your video, you'll kind of get an idea of how much, yeah, how much a given command reacts, how the vehicle reacts. It doesn't have a lot of lateral authority, but it does, it does lateral actually quite well for those little thrusters that are on there. Yeah, you can get out just a little bit more. You're only about 10 meters in front of Adelanta right now. I'll put this closer you want to, um, for you. There you go. You want to uh, generally, like, don't go real fast out there. <laughs> you did say drive it like you still live. Oh, look, your phone doesn't have a password protect. He's <laughs> <laughs> gonna steal your identity. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna come up a little bit now because that should put you in the center of the box. So you'll feel, you'll see if you see uh, if you keep zooming like that, you'll see Atlanta's camera twitch, or as you're probably used to, you'll see the thrusters on Atlanta fire up, trying to maintain its heading. That means you're while you're starting to pull on it. So, you know, and you'll see the tether stretch out. That's, that's a good, that's probably maximum tether in the bank there without. Jake, I just want you to know you have fans who are cheering you on. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah. You can go through all the cameras there. Jake has SPL off to concentrate. Oh, okay. No, no. You have you have uh, 
uh, fans cheering you on from the chat, from the public chat. Mahalo nui loa. Oh, he can't even hear. I was going to say, we don't even have to learn how to parallel park in Hawaii, so he's probably struggling. <laughs> <laughs> That's not on our driver's test. Oh, wow. <laughs> when I sit here, I try and uh, be as quiet as I can with the pilots, because I know I get really frustrated when my wife tells me how to drive her car. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna move this again. I'm trying to keep that near periphery for you. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're really good. Yeah, really close to two boxes there. I see it drifting to the south a bit there as well. You can also. Uh, yeah, you gotta hold a little lateral in there. You can also see the vessel's trajectory, yeah, course over ground. I slide it down. No, you're just trying to stay in the box there in front of Atalanta. Who is that? Uh, that the vessel seems to be going west now, is that correct? Is it? Are they supposed to be going west? We're heading 290. Right. Looks more like 270 to me. Ship's course over ground is 271. So, Kara, while we're cheering on Jake from back here, um, I also did want to give a shout out to Taylor Ann, who's been really um, gracious and patient in teaching not just me but training all of the data loggers and all of the science team and she's great and they have created a great environment um, and a learning environment so I've learned a lot. Thanks Taylor Ann. Thank you. Yeah anytime. I love to teach what I know uh, and share the experience and I'm really glad that you're enjoying it and anything else you want to learn just let me know. Yeah, I really enjoy Sorry, teaching everybody. So, yeah, it's not a bother anytime. Uh, the top ones are the verticals, and you know, starboard and port vertical, and the bottom ones are starboard and port horizontal, or port and starboard, actually. And then the... Um, the Z bias is um, some trim on the verticals to to hold the vehicle level when when uh, there's no auto altitude on. And the uh, joy gain is yeah you know what that is from doing our deck test. No, I'm all over the place with it. Um, I, yeah, generally keep it around 60, uh, otherwise the video is really jerky if I'm, like, you know, going around rocks and stuff, like when you're trying to pivot around something, it, they, man, he's loud. bit like a jeep on a dirt road in that aspect so it wants to swap ends really quick. One of the hardest parts of uh, is to actually to maintain your t heading. And it looks a lot better in the video especially for uh, people watching it later or trying to count uh, what they're seeing in the video if if you lateral versus changing your heading when you change heading it sme smears everything in the video and it also smears your sonar well I I'm looking at my sonar every couple seconds so if I see a target I lateral towards it because the sweep takes a few seconds to go back and forth so if you change your heading 
it smears the sweep because that thing's sweeping as you're changing your heading. I'm coming up a bit. Um, I know you're concentrating, Jacob, but if you'd like to um, turn your mic on, then the audience can kind of hear what questions you're asking and learn about the ROV driving process um, with you. Oh, I'll, I'll turn him on then. Oh, thank you. Also, Mia, if you turn off the green uh, by flipping up on everybody, it'll make them stop for us talking to you, I think. I'm not sure if your seat's different, but that's how it should be. Lie on the camera, too. I should look professional, not laid yeah. out in the chair. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you push up the green button um, on everybody, you should be able to turn off the force talk, but I'm not sure if your seat is different. Uh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Oh, are, you, are you saying I should sound professional on SPO as well? <laughs> I wouldn't want to break a long streak. Dan, professional? What? Dan, you have two uh, fans tuning in that are giving you shout outs as well. <laughs> oh, thank you. Dan's been having to deal with a whole <laughs> brand new front row this entire time. <laughs> They're saying you would be a great teacher for 3D yeah, parallel parking. Getting the feel mm -hmm. of it. But I also have I'm a trying to head teach and uh, both my children and my spouse for years and I've yet to succeed. You can zoom on that uh, shape if you want. Shrimp! <laughs> Look at that. Nicely done. I didn't even see that. I was like, what shrimp? Jake tracked it. Yeah, he did. He's also hungry. Dead sponge, I think. Halfway through this shift, and just wanted to give a sorry, some operations talk real quick. SPL, you guys are all right. I think you can go ahead, Kara. Okay, I wasn't sure if there was talking amongst uh, the front row for navigation. Um, but for our viewers just tuning in, um, we're about halfway through this watch, and we are uh, currently exploring this unnamed seamount, still in um, the northwestern. Uh, corner of Papahanaumo Kuakea. Um, we've been seeing some more deposit feeders. And. Sea star? Or sea Or uh, sea, sea urchin. 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 Yeah, I see the right there. Probably. And there was a fish also. Oh, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. You're doing great. It's a trochamisome. Wait, hold on, I have to read it. 
Tromacosoma hypsidium, potentially. Thank you. Good. Great zoom. Possibly another try. Pull up and uh, so you yeah, know the current's pushing you a little to the left, right? Yep. Well, I often so find if I'm trying to do that, I cheat to the right a little. Mm -hmm. They float across them almost. Yeah, and then I just let go of it. And okay. uh, it, it behaves much better if I'm not giving it input. Roger. Just kind of floats there. If the current's benign like it is you now, it's a little bit pushing you, but yeah. It's uh, one of the also things I'll do when I first sit down is I'll just take my hands off the controls and see see where it's at. Yeah, see what's happening. I can get in front of you for the stuff. I'll come up a bit. Yeah, there you go. Light the afterburners for a little while. Yeah, I'll come up. I'll come up. I'll come forward. You can also see by your uh, green snail trail when you stop, like which way it, you know, which way it drifts. Mm. If you're not, if you forget. Almost like looking at your whitewash, yeah. Yeah, totally. And again for our viewers, um, right now. It's crazy how similar Connor is. Jacob, our yeah. ROV intern, is currently piloting Hercules, so um, it's a pretty great moment. We're all tuning in to his first uh, first Hercules drive <laughs> um, and kind of learning about that process yeah, together. Well. Yeah, it's the first opportunity we've Another had where we're not around worm uh, passing by there on the right. Yeah, thank you, oh, and another one. That was like two... Do they want to look at it or no? No. Okay. We're going to speak now for everyone, please. Jake's asking if anyone wants to look at the worm. Uh, we can one. continue. You've seen one acorn yeah, worm. Yeah, they said they continue. <laughs> Jake, can you move your mic closer, maybe a little bit? Well, now I got to think about that in this chair, you know? You don't know. Also, He's uh, um, asking you to put your mic a little closer to your oh, face. Yeah. Sorry. No worries. Better? Yeah. Yeah, also they'll, a little uh, correct. They'll sir. circle something and you'll catch it in your peripheral. A little yellow circle there. I want to zoom on something. Roger. If so you have enough in the bank, you can, you know, stop and practice on stuff if you want. Okay. Let me try to get in front then. Yeah, right. Go for it. Yeah. Do it. Yeah, the umbilula or the C pen that we saw. So earlier, now if I want to adjust my heading, which I call oh, the umbilula, I have to turn off auto heading. It was actually and the genus Pseudoumbilula. You can because, you uh, can adjust your uh, heading without a heading on, but it's usually kind of ugly. Last year, the so that's umbilicus twisting, yeah. was split yeah. into two families, and if the number of polyps and are less than 15, then it's the family pseudombilula uh, day, what the game the genus uh, pseudombilula. Uh, so right now it's moving at 3 degrees per second in 10 degree increments. Oh, way past 270. Oh, you want to see that thing in the uh, upper right hand part of the screen there? Oh, Roger. Thank you. Okay, now we're facing west, so current's kind of like on our back almost. So, it's no, to our front. Come up a little bit there in the small you're coming in. Thank you. <laughs> it's 
So you'll yeah. notice if you zoom there. Pretty good to zoom. Yeah. The depending on the slope or whatever, but the lasers disappear out of the top of the screen. So. Yeah. Ooh, you I know said what that is? It's a whale beak, I think. What is it? Yeah. Wow. Stop the ship, be. please. Yep. Bridge, can we hold position, please? What is it? Muscle. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's not the track. You're right. Thank you. Lies. So we think this is a fossil? Absolutely. Yeah, this looks, wow. yeah, this looks like a real big. Epic, epic sighting, Jake, on yeah. your, your first drive. <laughs> the frogfish and a fossil. Are we going to, is that a? That's good enough, yeah. Is that a collection item, or are we just looking? Oh, no, we're not we're allowed just, to collect yeah. them. Oh, no, we're just good looking. Good luck. Yeah, uh, I can try it. I'll just put it back in the box. And okay, you can... Pull you can you can Did we get a good image of it? Give yes. him a minute to get okay. out in front. Then you can. Oh, we're good. We can keep going. Yeah, Roger. Oh yeah, I gotta catch up. Did you guys get a good photo of that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay, great. Got some good juju there. That's a very rare uh, once an expedition. Mahalo Kepua. Oh, I'm gonna change my heading to go back on two seven zero. Make my hold, way. Hold, hold on a minute, man. Oh. Let him get out in front of it. So I need to go more northeast. So. Yeah. So you can either lateral or you can turn your head turn. into the current a little and come in northeast. I'm going to turn and then try and cut you off. <laughs> the current might uh, affect you a little more on this heading because it hit you more broadside than it was before. Mm -hmm. That was huge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know how we were on the fossil, yeah? And then she stopped the ship. And then so I was on it, I had it in the box a little bit. Was that the current pulling me off or is that is that you a uh, combination of the current and uh Atlanta still moving. Mm hmm Okay. I think that was also another one of the fish. Um, you could probably slide to the north a bit more. I, th I think it's yeah, in the same family as the tripod fish, right? But it's not or a tripod wait, fish. Can, we're doing 270 now? Yeah. 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 Yeah, you're good. I'll just change the heading here. What is it? Oh, wait. Do you I want me to phase 2702? Atlanta's on 270, so. There's also something white there. Or am I seeing things? No, there's something white at the bottom. There's also like a giant mass in the upper right corner. Is it a huge rock? I think it's probably just a rock. Yeah, just a rock. Not <laughs> just a rock, I'm sorry. <laughs> Some kind of awesome basalt from a volcanic activity. Giant mass. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, there's, there's a sponge on, on it, it looks like. Ooh. Oh, possibly, I can't. Maybe I'm wrong. No, you're right, there's a sponge. Let's talk to good to zoom. Hmm. Oh, and is it a mushroom coral on, this, on that corner? Yes, yes. There's a small mushroom coral and a stalk sponge. I 
There's also Good. a base of dead coral on the right. That's good, thank you. Roger. I'm gonna try and make up getting the box. Yeah, you can once you get back out in front there and a little to the north and you can ask it to start moving the ship again. Roger. Another shrimp? Yep. This heading is good though. Even though we're moving two seven zero? Yeah, or? yeah, I think. No, that was the genus Sacrocalyx. Or silver grounds. The to be two seven zero. Yeah. Roger. Another urchin? Very purple. Or sea cucumber? Is it purple? So purple. But it's this pattern, this like external thing. That because does anything else has that? It's purple. <laughs> when I zoomed in, it has that bubbly structure. And another worm on the right side. No, these are different. Uh, yeah, yeah, but these are not. You get to zoom there if you want. Stop the fire. Yeah, these are not stop. I think the psycho galaxy is the only one which is which has that consistent. Yeah, yeah. See, this is clearer. This one. And then I'm gonna float over, and then we can. Yep, thank you. Nice. Just go by the genus number. Uh, I don't right. think it's possible. Back in the box. I think what's happening, because the oh, ship sorry. has stopped, Atlantis swinging in under the stern a bit there. Mm -hmm. So it's continuing to swing to the northwest there. Roger. Don't make it easy on me. He's, uh, he's, uh, listening. Um, no, I think we're fine on this. It's getting us where we want to go, isn't it? Mia, how far to waypoint three? Give me a second. Six hundred and fifty meters. So we're we're gonna be parallel with waypoint two and about two hundred meters. And then yeah, we're on the way to waypoint three. Me. <laughs> I thought you were talking on SPR. Okay. He'd be left. In the middle of the box now. Yes. Now that I kind of got you there, I'm going to yeah. make my way up. Yeah, she said if we don't get, get to exactly the waypoint two, it's fine. Things were fairly uniform and there was current pushing them around. But, uh, you know, as long as we get back to the environs of Waypoint 3, we'll be back on track. Roger. Coming up. Roger. You got it. These look like nodules to you all. They don't look very spherical, but they're the right size. Yeah, they just don't look have that nodule look. Right. I'm still not quite sure what nodules are or look like. I think they're like almost more like bubblegum looking, um, almost like a sphere. Not perfect, but yeah, yeah these just How look more like fractured. Um, like the they can be. Some uh, rocks yeah, off they can be. Right, maybe. They range in size okay. from. Maybe These don't look that round three though. centimeters or smaller. Yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah, Mia, it was really steep going up to waypoint two, which is maybe a good idea why we went around it, but we can go more towards waypoint three. Mm. We'll be back on track for the next watch. Are you in SPO? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's what we're doing. So we went north of it because it was so steep. Yep. Perfect. And uh, we're headed right towards waypoint three. If I just uh, nudge us another 10 degrees, we'll be headed straight at it. Good, thank you. This little rock field, or yeah, you can turn to your left, back into the hill, and uh, so maybe a couple bigger ones there. You can see them on your uh, yeah, that guy there. Yeah. If you hit the rock, you got a little too close. <laughs> can I? I still can with auto depth. Uh, I think it's steep. You're gonna have to uh, take it off, or turn it off, and kind of come come up. Yep. And that's up, yeah, not down. It's it not like should just float up when you uh, turn it off. Typically, don't want to thrust up because that will stir up the visibility, especially on this sandy bottom. Yeah, yeah. You can pull back a little on the stick, and that will because we're thrusting down. Down, we're going up. Yeah, so yep. if you notice when you pull back a little and it makes your little orange lines go away there, mm -hmm. then you're just floating. But you can see how fast it floated up. You're yeah. up at five meters now, so. And, if I, and when I turn on auto heading, does it stay, or auto depth, it stays at this depth, or it goes back kind of down too? It goes, it grabs whatever your current uh, altitude is. And so we're, we're in auto altitude. So it follows the bathymetry. Roger. The auto depth we typically only use in uh, blue water. Or if we're just sitting stationary and we don't have the deviate, you know, no altitude. Mm -hmm. We can. Uh, Let's move it point two up the hill here, if you want. Point two. Yeah, we should be good to start the boat movement. Yes. Yes, please. See where I'm going. Okay. I uh, just wanted to jump in here real you quick. Zoom in right there if you want. Another sea cucumber? Yeah, another sea cucumber on the rock. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Thank you. Roger. Another great zoom. It'll take a minute for the boat to get moving, so you can look around a little bit. 
I practiced like just like trying to hold. Now that we're uh, now that we're in the rocks, you can try setting it down a few times. Roger. Uh, yeah, take the auto altitude off. Yeah. Auto altitude is auto depth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So like. So you want? Yeah, click it off. I typically have it off while we're on the hill, anyways. And then, yeah, just gently set it down. It shouldn't be too silty here, so it shouldn't stir it up a lot. And why you just thrust up just a little? Uh, push the stick forward gently and watch your um, porch camera there. And as soon as it touches, so you're on the hill a little bit too. So as soon as it touches, you're good and then you give a little forward and uh, if you have auto heading on what you do it should um, be stable you only need a you know just a toe out or hand hold and then press auto depth again and it'll stay no, no, oh, no you have to hold it so you're just barely nudging up against something you know yeah putting your hand on the handrail as you're walking down the stairs so you want to get a little forward as well usually see the camera bump if you like you saw it bump just there yeah that well, was a nice gentle landing if you come in hard it'll be a you know obvious ka-chunk on the video yeah oh I'm going the wrong way oh. but once you see that little bump then you can kind of, you know hold your current commands in and it should stay so you gotta play, play around with it a little Roger. I come up and land in that little sand patch right there. Yeah, I typically try and you want to stay out of the sand because you'll oh. get it all over the front porch and then you know, have every time you come down to look at something it will, you know, you'll get all the particles in, in the video. Roger. That's why we didn't land while we are out in the, in the flats there. It's miserable when there's a pile of sand on the vehicle. Okay, it's probably time to uh, keep moving. Slowly mosey along. Yeah, it's gonna get steep oh. here. So. And there you can land. Let's go. So if you oh, just let just let go of it now, kind of let it float up. Yeah. And uh, kind of liked it at five meters. Uh, so the altitude number will change depending on the slope of the hill. Mm -hmm. It's kind of more of a trend because that we get the altitude from the DVL, which is on the very back of the vehicle. So if you're on a steeper hill, it's going to be, that reading is going to be higher. Okay. And if you're on flat, obviously, you know, it's closer to the seabed. Mm -hmm. So some other things to watch are um, the uh, bubble camera, obviously, that's why it's always pointed down like that. Mm -hmm. It gives you some very limited visibility of uh, how high you are. But you'll also see the, uh, I don't know, you get used to the video kind of blings, but it changes all the time as well because um, the iris is constantly changing. changing. But you'll, I don't know, you'll get, as you get closer, there's a, a, a kind of a level of detail that will kind of, I call it pop, it kind of pops. Mm -hmm. uh, the colors get more pronounced and the detail becomes more pronounced. It's kind of a Goldilocks. Yeah. On the flat, that's around 1.82 meters. So the front of the vehicle is less than two meters mm -hmm. away from what, what the camera is looking at.
So the hardest part of landing to zoom on something is landing in a place where you don't have to move the camera around. Mm -hmm. One of the things I tell new pilots is to fly the vehicle, not the camera. Because once you start, yeah, you'll see me tilt all the time mm -hmm. at the same time Gina is zooming in. But I rarely look left or right until after I'm landed. But then you got to, you know, move the camera back. And it's, it's nicer if you... Uh, center up what you're looking at. It's not always possible because the vehicle doesn't want to land that way. It uh -huh. wants to, you know, spin around on you. just wanted to jump in real quick and thank some of our viewers who are sending in comments. Um, thank you for um, sharing how Nautilus dives have inspired you uh, to create art, including those inspired by our Chana Cops we saw earlier. Um, I'll send that a link you sent to our watch team after our watch, so they can also see that really, really cute uh, knitted Chana Cops. Um, and thank you again for everyone uh, expressing support for the team and um, the wonderful learning that's going on um, with our interns right now. Um, Jake is doing a really great job uh, piloting Hercules, so we're all cheering him on from the back row. Thank you. Uh, science, I was just saying, um, Jake has SPL on for talking but not listening, so I let him know he got kudos. Oh, yes. No, that that's great. I don't want to distract him. Just, um... Let's try to zoom up on that one real quick. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Want to share? a little closer to it. Yep. Yeah, no, yeah. Want to yeah. share all the love coming in. For sure, for sure. Below the lasers, for sure. Yeah. Or right on the lasers, and you can tilt the camera. We're right on that rock. Yep. I have you. Mushroom coral. Oh. Yeah. And don't worry what. Right, next so I don't like try and pick a particular rock. I just come down gently until it stops moving. If you try and do that, you'll never, never get there. Okay. Trying to work with this auto, or this depth stuff. I'm kind of getting it. Yeah, you're doing great. Turned off auto depth. What? One, one of the significant challenges is to hold your altitude. As you go up and down, Jane has, she's all over the iris over here. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're doing great. I can tell by your uh, your depth history line here. No, you're not, there's not any big gross moves there. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, don't need to say sorry. And your snail trails go too. <laughs> Raise a straight line. Yeah, no, you're doing really good, Jake. Argus pilot, however, is lagging. OK. 
Okay, right here. Let's try this. Bamboo coral. Do you want to zoom? No, uh, we're fine. We okay. Can continue. Yeah. yeah, and just a reminder, if you guys want to say something, uh, he has, Jake has it off, so you won't be... Uh, right. Uh, yeah, we'd, we'd go on to his, his line. Yeah. I can hear you, though. Yes, Dan can hear you. <laughs> Can zoom. Zoom it in. Mm. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, hold a hole, hold a hole, hold a hole. Too, so I'm gonna pull on it. Okay. You can do a quick one right there. Yep. A quick zoom. Ooh, ooh, sorry, sorry, sorry. All right. Got a blast. I'll try and be better to get that. Sorry, science. See on the sonar in front of you there how that line is kind of at yes, a 45. Sir. So you you want to make that line perpendicular so you're looking right into the hill. Roger. Whenever possible, not always possible, of course. No one size fits all with our OB operation, but uh, in this case it is. So when you come over the I tall animals like this, yeah, we are passing over there. two beautiful so little gorges and uh, oh, several yeah. lava coral. Yeah, so watch your porch to make sure you don't mow them over. Roger. Uh, if you think you are, you can either stop or back up. I shouldn't have said back up. I'll, I'll usually just stop and float up, mm -hmm. and then I'll watch the porch as I go over to make sure. And usually going so slow, if you touch, it's you know. Unless, depending on what the animal is, some are really brittle if you touch, that's it. You want me to point my heading a little bit more left? There was a stalk. Yeah. You plucked on it as well? Seems yeah, stalk. I'm not good. sure. We're getting into the I think no. it might have been a pot belly. Okay. Okay. It was a eupectile, though. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, we saw something. one before where. Yeah, it was that. Yeah. Yeah. If it did have a stalk, yeah, we couldn't tell. It's from a eupectile, yeah. yeah. That's in the same family. Yeah, so now with these bigger boulders, I'm gonna just make my depth a little higher. Yeah, probably 
probably going to jump back in there now. We're getting back into the business. Roger. Animals and rocks. Uh, salt? Something floaty in the uh, yeah. Atalanta cam. Squishy and floaty. <laughs> Okay, I need a trade. Yep. Thank you. Nice Jake, pleasure. you did an amazing right. job. Woo! Yeah, Jake. Well done. Awesome. Hello, everybody, for bearing with that horrible driver. That's not you true. Great. You did great. <laughs> you did amazing. I'm, I'm in no way related to you, but I feel like so proud of you. Yeah. <laughs> like, like a proud parent, even though I learned, I'm obviously not your parent, but I'm just like so proud. Our our watch brother. Yeah. yeah. Aww, yeah. We were all taking photos of you. <laughs> Here. That's my cousin on the Nautilus side. Just yeah. one, too. <laughs> For all our viewers tuning in, um, our ROV intern just uh, completed uh, his first turn driving Hercules um, instead of Atalanta, and uh, it went amazing. We had some awesome zooms, um, saw lots of creatures on the way, and um, do you have anything to add, Jake? It's really fun. Um, <laughs> now I'm gonna take it in Dan, I'm not gonna hear the end of the me wanting the drive. You earned it today, man. You mm -hmm. spent uh I already had uh what was it, eight, twelve hours working on the system today? <laughs> and uh probably thirty five C in the windshroom. Yeah. Wow. So. I was really Worried about you guys after working so much? We're, we're worried about the fossilized whale beak. I know. Um, That's what it was? Yeah. That was amazing. That oh. was a fossilized whale beak. Oh, yeah, because you had SPL off, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I did that, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow, that was me. That was really rare. I think that's uh, like the fourth one we've seen out here in four years. Wow. All the expeditions we've done out here. Wow. Blessings. Totally. Yeah, so we're currently looking at a euclectelid sponge, and we passed over two or three sea cucumbers, probably in the genus Analactid, and also another pseudoambulula. Oh, Pashana, you're a little quiet. Okay. Is it better now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. The few times I've seen, uh, when I watch at home, Dan teach somebody, they've always seen something amazing, like an octopus or something. <laughs> <laughs> Dan is the good luck charm. Dan, Dan is the good luck charm. <clears throat> Blessed to learn from the best. Yeah, last time. Uh, With Megan, I, yeah. Yeah, she said it's in like less than 60 seconds yeah. finds an octopus. Because <laughs> I was gonna, I, w um, I was going to fill that spot if they didn't find anyone. Oh, yeah. Because uh, they only had like a two-day notice or something. Yeah, I think that was her third expedition. We finally got her in the... Uh, a batty patties. That would be the first on this dive. Okay. Push in there if you want. So this is a type of black coral, yes. right? Yes. You're absolutely correct. Probably the same species, the Batty Batty Cedo Alternate, that we were seeing in the last sea mount as well. But this is definitely the first observation uh, on this dive. Oh, what's oh, that? Uh, that looks like a polychaete. 
a polychaete? Ooh, yeah. Wow. Three worms are stranded. <laughs> it's like the way it moves is, is so uh, cool. Yeah. It's so coordinated and intricate. Yeah. We can continue moving. Thank you so much. Right. Yeah. So for that's yes. exactly how you learn. Um, the stick lock locks the current command in there, which is a very... So for those wherever the um, Opashana, it's wherever the alternating the or the... Um, so you got to kind of press the button That would be the difference? The, uh, the pattern of the branch? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we have... It's going to get steep like here, I think. It don't go to probably a different... Or can or a chrysogorgia? I can't see the spiral so much. Not an indigorgia, a chrysogorgia. Yes. Uh, for the black oh, coral. Like the steep. So, no, the batty batties are uh, not the alternate. They're coming simultaneously from each point. Mm. There's another sign of acted. There's another sponge on the right, a euplectelid, but I'm not sure. We're going to try and sure stretch it out here a little, so we have some more in the bank. Are we due for a rock yet? Or? Uh, we picked one up at the start of the dive, and uh, yeah, I think where we picked one up last was 2,400 meters, so or 2,250. So we let's could probably wait till we get some more. Yeah, near right. waypoint three. Right. There. I hear there are some good rocks at waypoint three. <laughs> Thanks for keeping track of that, Taylor. And Is it something? Yeah. Some of the sparsely branching bamboo corals. Well, it gets real steep. I'll zero that Z bias here. So I don't have to keep pulling back on the joysticks. Really a bad habit. Turn it down to, you know, so it, it's floating up nicely. I want to always be trusting down, not. Uh, yeah, if you, if you get in the habit of it, then you'll get, you know, around the dusty stuff and you'll pull back and it'll completely destroy the visibility. This beautiful mushroom coral and anthomastis or received anthomastis stuck underneath that rock. Um, Jake, 
Jake or Dan, if it's not too much pressure driving, I know this area is steeper, so if uh, there's too much going on, then no pressure to answer, but could you share with our audience a little bit about um, how the controls for Atalanta and Hercules are different? I'll let Jacob take that one yeah. since he's got direct experience now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so with Atalanta, uh, pretty much what holds my depth is the cable or is the winch. So I can haul in and pay out. And that's what kind of controls my depth. And then um, I have a graphic, graphical something interface. It's a GUI. Um, but um, so user, interface. user interface, there you go. And um, so yeah, that can control pan and tilt with the camera with just, just clicking. And then I can just control my heading. Um, yeah, and I can go anywhere. Um, but with Hercules, that's more joysticks. So you have like, you, have, you can use your thrusters to go you know, forward, backward. And then you can twist to go left and right. And then you can also go laterally. Um, and then that's usually in, that's in your right hand. And in your left hand, you have two joysticks. You have a pan and tilt for the camera and then um, your depth joystick. So thrusting up to uh, go up and then thrusting down to go down. But that's, yeah, that's about the difference. Just you're on a com using a mouse with Atalanta and the winch, controlling the winch and then controlling um, two joysticks pretty much with Hercules. Wow. Thanks for that uh, helpful um, visual for uh, all the viewers. I think it helps uh, to understand um, kind of the different roles and um, the, how to navigate around a 3D space using two ROVs. And if anyone wants more information about that dual body system where you use two ROVs, um, at a time um, where one of them kind of has like an eye in the sky above the other. Uh, there is a, a informational video on the YouTube page that helps um, show that with a great graphic. Yeah, another beautiful little gorgeous. Seems like yesterday he was doing the same thing. Well, been a couple of years now. Yeah, he took to it like a duck to water. Just like you did. You guys will be running the show in another couple of years. This is like the fourth really long individual we've seen or colony we've seen on this dive, right? Yeah, whenever they come into frame, I'm kind of shocked by them. <laughs> like yeah. that one, I was just like, whoa. Yeah. It's so big and beautiful. I took a picture, I'll admit it. <laughs> Thanks, Hans. <laughs> I took like five, so you're good. <laughs> I'm probably the one causing the storage issues. <laughs> oh no, I think Jaina has been going through uh -huh, this oh, photos, the photos, and caps. I've been going through oh. um, the data photos. Yeah. But it's actually really good because um, I actually get excited. I was like, oh my god, predatory tunicate. I forgot we saw that. <laughs> so yeah. thanks for taking those pictures. Yeah, it's nice that we have two cameras going. Yeah. I think this coral is close to being my favorite. Maybe oh, if wow. we see a few more, I'll be convinced. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Here's one that looks like a like a dandelion or a yeah. Yeah, like wispy. Yeah. How many more do you need before you call it your favorite? <laughs> I think you manifested that this one. This is number <laughs> five? Okay. <laughs> we, we may have seen more than five, though, I think. In this oh, yeah. Day. More yeah. than five? I oh, think okay. so. Yeah. Because there are a couple of smaller ones. 
in pairs. Oh, but yeah. I do really like the very tall, tall spiral. Yeah. Are you good for another hundred? I think Ava Gorgi is the favorite um, for a lot of people. No, let's do, uh, let's do a 20 or so and get close to watch change, so. I definitely think it's the symmetry that I really yeah. like about it, yeah. What's that? Yeah, it's a good, it's been, it'd be nice to be static for uh, Andover. What's that? Oh, never mind. Sorry. Yep, we got a ways to go. No, that's that's fine. Yeah. Sorry, I saw someone walking around in the winch room, and I looked at my hour hand, and it was ten tell, and that's usually a cue that it's watch change, but. every couple hours. A question for Jacob. Um, people want to know, do you play video games? And if so, does that help you drive the ROV? I'm sorry. Wait. I, I we always get that question. Really? <laughs> the answer is always no. Yeah, I, I do not have time to play video games, but I do drive a lot of boats. Oh. So that's, that, that really does, that really did help me. Um, I'm pretty that. sure, sorry, I'm pretty sure that's my teenagers texting in that question. <laughs> no, it doesn't help. Trying to get support for more video game time. Yeah, I do not. I do not play video games. So. Oh, I mean, I play Nintendo Switch every now and then, but <laughs> that does not correlate. Yeah, I was gonna Mario say Kart you, does you not brought <laughs> yeah the Switch, but yeah, yeah no, <laughs> no. Mario Kart and uh, golf, Nintendo Sports do yeah, not correlate. I feel yeah. yeah that's a beautiful oh. Bamboo fan. Take your uh, take your mom and dad's car apart, put it back together again. That'll help you. <laughs> Yeah, driving boats, driving boats, that really does help. Wow. And your um, boat driving experience was from working in the lab? Uh, yeah, I, I'm working at the uh, University of Hawaii at Hilo um, boating program that we have there. We have a plethora of boats and I'm blessed to be um, under a awesome captain, Kainoa Hawaii who's um, the best guy I've ever seen drive a boat and um yeah I, I literally like how I study Dan right now just looking I study him and then like how I was asking Dan oh like I always ask questions oh why did you do that when you do this oh how come you did that and um yeah I'm just very curious very and yeah I love to drive on the water and now I like to drive underwater <laughs> this is really cool Sorry, no video games. <laughs> Do you want to share a little bit more about like um, what your lab does? Um, yeah, so I um, I also work in the multi-scale environmental graphical analysis lab, or also known as the Mega Lab, which is founded by uh, Cliff Cupono and Dr. John Burns. Dr. Cliff Cupono, sorry, and Dr. John Burns. Um, and Cliff Cupono is Dr. Cliff Cupono is from uh, Hilo. And Dr. Burns is uh, from South Africa, and they really love surfing and coral reefs. And um, they kind of figured out a way to uh, map our favorite coral reef breaks around the world. Um, and so yeah, we use um, underwater photogrammetry. So we do a lot of diving on tanks and uh, use underwater SPL cameras and go down and take we use like a 20 meter plot and go down and um, take about 
somewhere between 300 to wow. 800 photos um, wow. swimming back and forth so almost like you're mowing your lawn uh, you ought to have about like 80% overlap in each of your photos so uh, yeah so you're just like swimming through your 20 meter plot you put down two uh, scale bars and then you kind of start on one end and start you know we call it mowing the lawn and then you know, take a picture every second every every sec, second and a half um, kind of swimming slowly and then we bring that back to the lab and then where uh, we put it into multiple uh, applications that we use kind of just like what we use here with the multi um, and then kind of make our we make a 3d model of um, the coral reefs and then we can uh, use those 3d models to digitize and kind of um, identify what corals are there um, kind of like the bleaching events and just looking at overall health of corals so yeah we're an inshore coral reef lab i love what i do i love diving so wow that's so awesome yeah. it's a, such a fun mixture of like different kind of disciplines you're mentioning like you're mentioning surfing and um, photogrammetry <laughs> and uh, um, like uh, 3D models, so really cool. Is there any way to see those 3D models uh, or is yeah, that? Yeah, definitely. Um, you go on the megalab.org or the megalab on Instagram. Um, you know, we have a lot of um, visuals and uh, things that we do. We're, we are um, a lab with mostly um, local and Hawaiian guys. We're trying to, trying to change up that narrative of kind of what a uh, scientist looks like you right. know we, we can be surfers we can be fishermen and um but okay, yeah. still love science so awesome yeah the megalab.org and the megalab on instagram and check us out um we're doing big things we have a lot of big things coming up <laughs> so sorry a lot of mega things yeah mega things that's, that's <laughs> what we call it mega things <laughs> um well, yeah, we, we mapped a uh, cloud break, a uh, very one, a uh, very special surf break in the world. So yeah, we we, we do pipeline and um, do uh, hoping to do more surf breaks in the world. Trying to see, but yeah, thank you, Carol. Yeah, thank you for sharing. I think we're doing this Zoom right now. Oh, Pashana, do you have any comments on this one? Yeah, so this is definitely a black coral and we are trying to get a better idea on the family or the genus, but definitely a black coral. Mm -hmm. Maybe a Parantipathes, but I'm not sure. I've seen this. There's also a, a tiny critter in the rock, right? And it has some associates yeah. on it, the black coral, I think. In the in the rock that's like right. Um, oh, the white kind of. The so white. above the white, yeah. Above the white. Above the white, squishy. <laughs> but yeah. That's, yeah, it looks like probably the genus. Yes, Pinantibates. No. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it was really interesting knowing about uh, Jacob's work in the Mega Lab. Yeah. I'm interested in looking no, it just up. auto heading. So I'll turn on auto heading after, after it lands and kind of staples out, or sometimes before, and it'll keep it from walking around. Uh, you have to kind of watch the thrusters and make sure one's not reversing. Uh, uh, so if you're, the fine. technique is if you're thrusting forward a little bit, like you're pushing on something with the boat, uh, then you hit auto heading and they're both, they're both thrusting the vehicle forward so they won't reverse it and blow it out once in a while you see it blow out or you see off to the side of the camera then so if i land with auto heading on and then it twists the other one will reverse to try and twist it back but if you land and you push forward and then hit auto heading it'll keep the vehicle from walking left and right 
So it's, yeah. Land, machine forward and down. Auto heading on, and once it stables out, you can hit stick lock. Yeah. Um, I don't want to interrupt operations again, so uh, if it's not a good time to answer a question, then no worries. But um, Jake, I was wondering if you could share a little bit more about like how you got uh, started in the Mega Lab. Like, what was your journey like? Um, were there particular things that inspired you or um, particular um, milestones or challenges you had um, growing up and then um, kind of entering this field? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I grew up a surfer. Go ahead, Jaina. Um, and... Oh, Upashina, you want to talk about this? Sorry, I was muted. Yes, it looks like another uh, per antipathies, which would be uh, a black coral again. Uh, yes. Sorry, Jacob. I had to. Yeah. Good. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, yeah. Um, I grew up a surfer, and uh, my home break of how bush on in Eva Beach. It's only like a 10 minute walk away from my house. So it's a surf there all the time and it's not the best looking corals. And um, I got to see that my home break and a bunch of other home breaks um, that I surf kind of just deteriorate over time. Uh, I grew up diving with my dad, uh, just kind of everything at the beach, but it's just kind of sad seeing over time, like things change when I was a kid to when I got older. So, um, I knew I wanted to, um, you know, protect these these coastlines and these reefs and everything, and I love to dive and everything. So I went to um, I went to University of um, Hawaii at Hilo. Or first, I was at HCC. I was at Hawaii Community College, um, and then uh, was actually taking a bio class. And I wanted I talked to my teacher after, and I was like, Hey, you know, this is what I'd like to do. I, I don't know what jobs are out there, like or like what kind of things can I do? And then she was like, you know what, there's this guy uh, I went to school with, his name is Dr. Burns, he is just starting up this lab um, at UH Hilo. I think you should talk to him, he does, he, he does diving and he, does, he surfs a lot and everything too, he's a surfer, so yeah, you definitely go talk to him and set up a meeting and a 30 minute meeting turned into like a two hour talk of us just like, you know, we like the same, we are just, you know, like it just clicked between us, and he was like, "Yeah, let's kind of get you on, get you on board." Um, and yeah, I started like I had no scuba diving experience. I was just a free diver my whole life, and he kind of helped me go that scientific diver route that we have at um, the U University of Hawaii, which is an awesome, awesome program. Um, got a lot of my certifications, and then. Oh, yeah, kind of just, you know, it slowly started doing more work for the lab, got hired on as a student, and um, got on to many different projects that I got to be, I'm stoked that I got to be a part of. And, yeah, that's kind of just how I got into the lab and what I'm, how I started doing it. Um, just kind of seeing the people in the lab, like, it's like, whoa, these guys all look like me. It was a, you know, a, a local lab, definitely, with a, a lot of Hawaiians and local people in it, so it was it's very it was very inspiring. Like, oh, they can do it. I could do it. I could be a scientist too. So, yeah, very inspiring. Inspiring. You know. Well, that's great, right? That's I think I always yeah. like listening to others' journey into the field and how they get involved. <laughs> and yeah, thank you so much for sharing, and um, I I think. Uh, your story could be an inspiration too. We just got a comment saying, "I love the Mega Lab underwater camp." So oh yeah, <laughs> we have a so in Kona, at, uh, we have there's a, a OTEC, uh, the Oceanic Technologies um, place. There's just a where there's a lot of like saltwater farms. So in uh, in Kona, there's a lot of big like underwater like saltwater like tubes and like big metal tubing that bring saltwater into um 
these farms and everything. So there was a decommissioned one, and uh, we partnered up with some people, and uh, yeah, we have a live stream cam um, at about uh, 23 feet depth, um, right, right outside of Kona. That's live 24/7, and so anybody can log on to that Megalab cam, and um, you know we have our people. You have like our usual people on there, you know, that everyone's, you know, count fish, there's a bunch of sharks, everything you can see um, underwater, they all come in into that area and yeah, everyone loves it. It's a, it's a cool little camera thing we got going on and um, yeah, yeah, Megalab Cam is awesome. Wow, that's so cool. Is there something like your favorite sighting from the cam? Do you have Ooh. one? Um, let's see, there, oh, uh, I did see, like, Omilus and, like, Uluas, or, like, the, um, the Chavalis, like, when, like, see them hunting, and, uh, so, like, they turn, like, Uluas or the Chavalis, they turn black Whoa. when they hunt, yeah, so, like, usually they're, like, that silver grayish, and then when they hunt, they turn black, and it was, that was, that was cool to see, to see them kind of be in their predator mode. Um, yeah, they are the Sopranos of the underwater world. <laughs> yeah, they, they have are. an attitude. Yeah, they know they're, they're the top dogs. Uh, they like to let them know. And um, yeah, that's kind of cool. There's a, there's an octopus. There's two, there's two octopus that live like in like the coral heads, like right below the camera. So like to see yeah. them like always come out and that type of thing is cool. That's so cool. They're they're just like resident. Yeah, they're residents there. Oh, and that's yeah, fun. so <laughs> it's cool to see them come over. Like, oh, there they are. Um, Do you ever see like shells around their burrows? That's like, is that like a um, way people can kind of like spot octopus? Is like they'll have like clam shells or whatever. Oh uh, yeah. They ate? Yeah, it's actually like a big like mounding almost like oh. coral and they just like kind of cruise on the top of it and then we'll like <laughs> go back down like where you cannot see the camera and, and what's cool about the camera too is that it rotates it's a 360 oh, so wow. uh, it's on a timer so yeah it goes around and yeah i kind of get to see the whole reef action and it kind of it's it's awesome you know for people who don't live in hawaii you can see you know our reefs thriving um and kind of the biodiversity we have down there and all the fish so yeah it's an awesome it's an awesome camera an awesome idea that um, dr burns had and kind of put it into fruition push it there a bit for me that's great does it have two tubes two osciums yeah yeah yep that's help. uncommon no or um, I may, am yeah, I mistaken? No, 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 you're not mistaken. Uh, it, it, it is a euplectelid. Looks like a euplectelid, but I have never seen a euplectelid with two osculum. But maybe. I also don't think yeah. I have seen this, but I'm also not a sponge expert. <laughs> Um, I'm looking in the guide here to see if I see anything similar, yeah. even in a different grouping, but not quite. It is, yeah, it, the oscula, having two oscula, maybe it was some kind of an injury that the sponge experienced and then kind of repaired itself and formed two oscula. That can happen, but that's also, un I, I have never observed it. So this is a very cool observation. And in the last uh, five or ten minutes, I think we also passed over uh, our first crinoid for the dive. It was uh, on a rock, quite well camouflaged. Uh, and there was also a halosaurid, uh, the, a fish, and uh, at least there was an anthomastus a small anthomastus and a couple of bamboo coral fans, both the more branched yellow version and the lesser branched version. Come up a bit for us, please. And I, we have a little under an hour left on our watch. And we have definitely transitioned into a more rockier 
part of the seamount where we are seeing lesser amount of sediment and more rocky substrates. some numbers for us. We get a chance. Yeah, very cool what you mentioned, um, passion about the injury, right? Because like sponges are so good at um, yeah. regenerating. There's also an anthomastis to the right and one of the sparsely branched bamboo. Um, and another question for Jake. <laughs> it's the Jake Jake stream tonight. Um, <laughs> uh, what what is it like to be a scientific diver? Like, what kind of um, um, permit or not permit, but um, what kind of uh, certification is that and process to get that certification? If again, yeah, only if you're okay with it. If you're um, driving, that's no problem. Yeah, um, that's a big. Squat lobster? Oh, Give white. me two minutes and I can answer that. Squat. Okay, sounds great. And we have a urchin, I think the same one that we saw previously with a complicated name. Trochosoma? No. I think, yeah, close. Tromegasoma? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And is that a pair of antipathies too? Probably, let's zoom in. Looks like that. Yeah, push it there. No. Yeah, it doesn't have the black skeleton. Exactly. I was hoping that it's a Z pen, and it is a Z pen. If we can zoom in a little bit. I think the orchid is moving. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, it's moving. You good? It's gonna can is that full zoom? No. Yeah, can we get a closer look at the coral? It's moving kind of fast. Yeah. Yeah, so this is a uh, Valdesenia, or uh, which was previously called a Halipterus sea pen. Uh, I'm thinking about it. Should we? Okay, let's let's continue moving. Thank you so much. So it is a sea pen. It is a sea pen. It is a sea pen. Uh, genus Valdesenia. And this was formerly called the Halipteris, so and Halip, the name Halip. A lot of people are more familiar with the genus name Halipteris, uh, but it has been now put in the genus Baltasenia. Rather, it used to be called the Baltasenia. The genus has been resurrected. Why did names get changed like that? Yeah, so it depends. That, for example, for I think for Baltasenia, the story was that. Uh, 
there were there were there were some sea pens that were called Valdesenia and then they were moved to other uh, taxonomic groups because they didn't fit that so there were others but in looking so uh, the one group of researchers when looking back at halipters and working on them they realized that what used to be called the Valdesina were actually the halipters now depending on the timeline the genus name Valdesina is older than halipters so when you find that something based on timeline had something was uh, moved or a name was not it was put not in use then you have to go back to the older one if you find that something similar And I saw you were using that um, guide worms earlier. Yeah. yeah, I've seen that before. That's yes. pretty helpful. It is pretty helpful. So that is basically the, I forget the acronym. It is uh, yeah World Register of Marine Species. So it is a taxonomic database for all marine organi organisms. And it is, a it is a very useful repository where you have the taxonomic information and it, it does a great job of updating uh, all the recent changes and they have all the citations and all the original descriptions uh, linked in the same page uh, because otherwise it sometimes can be difficult to get access and find the original descriptions if they are from the 1700s or the 1800s so there's the Biodiversity Heritage Library, which has, um, this is a newer genus, this is not that, but for older ones, we have the Biodiversity Heritage Library, which has scanned and copies of the old original documents for taxonomic descriptions, so it links them, to, because they're not PDFs, right, they're scanned copies and sketch diagrams of which ones they are, so it's very useful. And I think we are again seeing one of the stocked uh, euclectelids. Um, it would be the genus, uh, probably Bolosoma. Yeah, it looks like a Bolosoma. And there's so much of variability within the genus Bolosoma. Yeah, some of them look like roses. Yeah. And other <laughs> ones look like the futuristic jets in this chair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the neon green ones. Thank you, New Mexico. There was a shout out <laughs> to Hans from New Mexico. <laughs> That's great. The entire state of New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want me to get back to that question, Carol? Yeah, that would be great. Oh. Um, if you can share about. Are you good for another? Yeah, so um, the UH Manoa has a scientific diver program, and to get in it, uh, you need a uh, open water certification. So saved up some money, got an open water cert, uh, and then I got into the scientific diver class, which you come out with um, a rescue diver, uh, certification. These are all through Naui. Rescue diver. Uh, oh my gosh. Wow. What are, what are my certs? Um, rescue diver. Night diver. Night diver. Uh, advanced. Uh, you work your way down oh yeah. deeper, right? Yeah, advanced. Oh, a master diver. Yep. And um, I want to say that's it. There's maybe another. Another one, um, but then uh, you can also go do, um, I'm also NYCHOC certified. And then, um, yeah, so pretty much um, being with a scientific diver, you can, there's an also another class called QUEST, um, which stands for Qualitative Underwater Something Surveying Techniques. Ecological. Ecological surveying techniques. Thank you, Hans. Um, and they, that class kind of teaches you all the uh, survey techniques that NOAA uses and um, DONR, DAR, uh, Division of Aquatic Resources, Department of Natural Resources, all of them. And so then in, um, 
kind of like so when they look for divers if you kind of did quest you they're like oh, okay this person already knows how to do all the um like surveying techniques so that being coral reef surveys um coral uh, fish surveys and um yeah to get in the class you have to take a test oh, um wow. to like to know your species so there's mm -hmm. you have to know uh 100 species of fish or 200 species of fish 50 corals and 50 lemurs or um, seaweed and then you take a 100 question test and it's just randomized wow. fish coral lemur all in different order and you have to know the um genus and the species yeah. and you have and spelling counts so oh my gosh you're like fat stack, of, fat, <laughs> fat stack of i walked around looked like i had a lot of money but it was just a fat stack of cards or um, <laughs> uh, no cards um and um yeah and then kind of that's just pushing on that little orange oh i got thing into there. it but yeah go talk about this sponge yeah, we can take a break if any operational things need to um, take place. Okay, what is the red thing on the top you're of the Euplectin? It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the only one in the room. <laughs> there are four biologists at least in this room. <laughs> it's kind of cute. I have no idea. You know, I have no idea either. Is it like a little polo that like one single... Baby, baby just settled. Maybe, yeah. but I don't see uh, any polyp like structure. It looks like a melted polykeep. Yeah. <laughs> melted. Exactly. I was going to say it looks similar to the polykeep we saw. Yeah, At least the little appendages. It I'm didn't guessing. look like legs. Yeah, I can't. I don't think we can tell really yeah. from It's so small. Something yeah. weird. I'm sure someone out there might know. Yeah. So bright. At least we have the images, so that's good. Okay. Thank you. And there is an anthomastus at the back behind. And there's also a pair of antipathies on the dark rock with the shrimp by it. Sorry, we can go back to the interesting diving stories of Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Um. You were uh, sharing about uh, quest and the test you were taking and basically how you became Upashana except for shallow water things. <laughs> <laughs> Upashana doesn't uh, know fishes. <laughs> 200 fishes. Just so hard now. It's, uh, it's so hard now because like um, now when I do surveys like we just uh, we do like the first two letters of the species and, yeah. or the gene and then oh, the wow. first letter the, or like, and the genus and stuff so yeah, now I talk in like four letter sure. codes. Well, about fish, so it's so bad. <laughs> like, what is that fish? I'm like, I that's, think that's SAR. Our first star fish. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's two starfish. Star predatory. Predatory. Predatory, predatory. predatory event. Yeah, it's again one of those Coney Asterisk sea stars between the three genera that I am always confused about who they are. Um, the Sociaster, Evo Plosum, and Hepasta. Probably a Hepasta feeding on a bamboo coral fan. Okay. And at the back, I think we have a solaster at the sea stuff. Mm, that's a very wow, beautiful view. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ugh. So that's the sea star stomach, Dance right? Dance favorite. <laughs> yeah, and part of yeah. it is the stomach, mm. which is surrounding the corals. And then we have the tube feet extending, and that's wonderful. Wonderful observation. Okay. Thank you so much. It's feeding, right? Yeah. yeah. But it <laughs> it looks like it's stuck, but it's yes, just feeding. Yes, it looks <laughs> like it fell down and it's stuck. <laughs> um, sorry, uh, Jacob, feel free yeah. to continue if you'd like. No worries. Um, but, yeah, it's just Come up, a couple classes that I got to take and is blessed to be a part of. and. Uh,